What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to tonight's Late Night Agenda, where, as always, I will be filling you guys in on the latest news stories surrounding Liverpool Football Club. If you could indulge me for a little minute, though, before I do, as you can see on the screen, we are closing in on our first ever live show taking place in Dublin in the beautiful Sugar Club on August the 4th, Bank Holiday Weekend. It is just two weeks away now. If you want to come and join us, there are still tickets available. You can get them from the link in the description of the video. It is an over 18s event, so hope to see you there. It's going to be a fun night, and there's plenty of surprises along the way as well. So, fingers crossed we see it in Dublin. If not, keep your eyes peeled for a potential Cardiff show, which we could be giving you news on real soon. So, look, let's get stuck into tonight's topics. The first one, and probably the name on most of your lips, is Decore from Crystal Palace. And... There's an article that I'm going to read you out a little bit of now that gives you some information on the situation with the core eight, the potential valuation and where Liverpool are at. So the Daily Mail said yesterday that the core eight was being valued by Crystal Palace at an eye-watering 70 to 80 million pound. Very good player. Came from Lawns for, I think, 21 million pound. So that is quite a steep valuation. But the goes on and says the claim has received fresh backing from BBC sport reporter Alex Howell who also adds that Anfield Chiefs believe this is a fair valuation for the midfielder so according to the BBC sport representative Liverpool are looking at the valuation of the core and thinking that that's fair so is this an indication of a potential bid coming from Liverpool for the core I don't know but I'd be incredibly surprised to see uh, FSG sanction a bid of 70 to 80 million quid for a midfielder but let's wait and see what happens and also if you're going to spend that much money on a midfielder why not go over to uh, Inter Milan again and see if you can get Barella just a thought but on Barella I do actually have a little bit of information that I wanted to go through on Barella and his latest apparently we're not the only ones interested in him which won't come as a surprise to you there is a piece coming out of Italy for Tudor Mercado who says that um, Manchester City and Pep Guardiola have been impressed at what they've seen of Barella. They go on to say that the final against AM against Manchester City was where Barella caught their eye, really, or you know, impressed. I don't know what game they're watching, but I've watched Barella play quite a bit, and that game against Manchester City was probably not one of the better games I've seen from him. In fact, I don't really think there was anybody who played overly well in that final. But they go on to say that Liverpool, Newcastle and Manchester City are in a battle for Barella's signature. Look, I don't think Newcastle are still in the mix. I think the fact that they're about to sign Harvey Barnes, the fact that they brought in Sandro Tonali, um, I think that rules them out. Us, again, I'm going to say what I've said before, I'd love it, but I'd be very surprised to see FSG sanction such a big fee. And Manchester City, well, well, we know they've got the means, right? They've got the finances to make it happen if they so want. And that... Always has you worried. They're about to sign Josko Gvardiol from RB Leipzig for, again, a pretty hefty fee. So I hope that they don't get him. But, you know, I'd love him personally. And another player who's been doing the rounds today, and this is where we move into the latest topics, really. Marco Verratti is somebody who apparently is of interest to Jurgen Klopp. Now, I scratch my head a little bit here because I've always been a fan of Verratti. Go back and watch my videos three, four, five years ago. I've always said he'd have been a dream signing for me at Liverpool Football Club. But those days are gone. Marco Verratti is now 30 years of age, very injury prone, and I don't think would be a good addition. Now, the keep say that he could be a target for us this summer. They don't really give a valuation. He's 30 years of age. I, I don't want them. Quite simply, I don't want them. Two, three years ago, absolutely. Right now, nah. I don't think Verratti would be a good fit. And I feel very dirty saying that because... I've always been a huge fan of his work, but right now, too old, too injury prone. So it's a no for me, but again, I'd love to know what you guys think. Moving on to Joshua Kimmich. Um, there's a piece today coming out of Germany, and it speaks about the fact that he's on €300,000 a week at Bayern Munich. So immediately to me, that rings alarm bells that I don't think we'd be able to match that wage. And this is before we get stuck into a potential fee for Joshua Kimmich. The numbers that I'm seeing are about 60 to 70, and that's a guesstimation. But I'll bring you right back to FSG. Do we think that John W. Henry and FSG will signal or sanction, I should say, a 60 to 70 million pound bid for a 28-year-old midfielder, despite his versatility, despite the fact that we need experience in our midfield now? I can't see it. So I'm sitting around scratching my head trying to figure out 
where I think Liverpool are going to go next. Coop Miners, of course, from Atalanta is a name that we've mentioned a couple of times. I think he's a solid player. But it is just a guessing game right now. It's quiet, but I'm actually confident when it's quiet. When Liverpool are being linked to everybody in Sundry, I kind of don't know what to make of it. But when we're quiet, we seem to act quickly then. So I wonder if the journalists have gotten a little briefing you know, to don't put out too many crazy links because Melissa Reddy spoke about a potential stealth signing. Neil Jones spoke about the fact that he thinks Liverpool might make a left field signing that we haven't spoken about yet. So I wonder, are they just guessing? Do they know that something's in the works, but they don't know what it is? I don't know, but I'm very intrigued to find out because a couple of more good signings and I think we're, we're good to go. It's a kick in the nuts losing Fabinho and Henderson. But if you look at it from a positive perspective, you're talking about our captain being 33 years of age. And in 2021, when he got that contract renewal, FSG didn't want to give it to him. Some of the people at the, the club were against it, but the manager pushed his case and got him the two-year extension. Hasn't really worked out for Jurgen with regards to that. We are getting a £12 million fee for him. But Fabinho, that's the one that we need to replace. Yes, you got Henderson's experience, but Fabinho is a here and now number six. And we can talk about last season, say that he was up or down, but we need to we need to replace him, in my humble opinion, and I think we will. I just don't know with who yet. Now, to finish up tonight, I wanted to give you a little update on Levi Colwell and the situation with him at Chelsea. So I'm always going to get people saying to me, they're not going to sell him, Craig. You're absolutely away with the fairies. But hear me out. I still agree with you. I think it's very, very unlikely that we sign Colwell. But we know Fafana had an ACL injury, so he's away for a bit. And we all assumed that Levi Colwell was going to step up and fill those minutes. But the evening standard tonight say that uh, Mauricio Pochettino is interested in a £50 million move for Crystal Palace's centre-back Mark A, who, of course, has also been linked to Liverpool. So if you're Levi Colwell and you see Pochettino shopping around for a centre-back, it probably makes you think, does he really trust me here? Does he really see me as part of his future plans? So... If they go and bring in a centre-back, I wonder if Klopp will wait to see what happens with Colwell. Will Colwell extend his Chelsea deal? Will he run it down a little bit and then Liverpool and himself will be in a far better position next summer? So if Klopp wanted to play that game to wait for the right man, I'm willing to roll that dice for the likes of Colwell because we did it waiting for Verge. We got the man. We got the one we wanted. It's worked out. I'd be willing to do the same. Right now, we've got Joel Matip, who's a year left to go. Joe Gomez, he got fresh terms. Van Dijk and Ibrahim Kanade. So we're not exactly short of centre-backs. Yes, you could talk about the fact if there's an injury, we're in trouble. But we've still got young players we could recall if needs be. So I want to know how you feel about Colwell. Would you wait a year to get him? Or do you think it's now or never? Over to you guys. Let me know your thoughts. As always, I look forward to reading them. And I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. We will be live again from 8.30 right here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video. And as always, thank you for giving up some of your day to have a little chat with me. And uh, listen to an Irishman waffling. Much love. Bye-bye.